In this lecture, we will learn about the Memento design pattern and how to implement it in Python. Memento is a behavioral design pattern that lets us save and restore the previous state of an object without revealing the details of its implementation. We can use this pattern when we want to produce snapshots of the object state to be able to restore the previous state of the object. The Memento pattern relies on three key objects. The originator is the class that creates the Memento object. It also restores the originator to a previously stored state. The Memento object is a class that holds the info about the saved state of the originator object. Basically, the originator is the original object, and the Memento is the copy object. The caretaker stores the Memento for later use. It only stores the object. It does not modify or examine it. Let's look at the pros and cons of using the Memento design pattern. The advantages of this pattern are that we can produce snapshots of the objects without violating its encapsulation, and we can simplify the originator's code by letting the caretaker maintain the history of the object state. The disadvantages of using this pattern are that it could consume a lot of memory if you create mementos too often, versioning can be difficult if the memento is stored persistently, and caretakers should destroy obsolete mementos, but since they don't know much about their state, they cannot perform efficient memory management. Let's learn how to implement the Memento design pattern in Python. Up at the top of the code, we will type from abc import abc comma abstract method. We will also type from date time import date time. Next, we will create a class named originator. It will have a variable named state initialized to a value of none. We will define the init function for our originator class, which will take in two parameters, self and state. We will set self.state equal to state. Then we will print out the state to the console using a format string. Next, we will create a perform action function that takes in two parameters, self and num. Inside of this function, we will print out the message originator performing an action to the console. Then we will set self.state equal to num. After that, we will print the message originator state has changed to, and then the state that the originator has changed to. The next function we will write will be a save function that takes in the self parameter. Inside of this function, we will return concrete memento with self.state passed in. After that, we will have a restore function that takes in two parameters, self and memento. Inside of this function, we will set self.state equal to memento.getState. Then we will print out the message originator state has changed to and pass in self.state. After that, we will define our memento class, which will extend the ABC class. We will use the abstract method annotation and define a getName function that takes in one parameter, self. We will use the pass keyword inside of this function, since we will implement it in the concrete memento class we will create in a moment. Then we will use the abstract method annotation again and create a getDate function that takes in one parameter named self. We will use the pass keyword inside of this function. Next, we will create a class named concrete memento that will extend the memento class. Inside of this class, we will define the init function which will take in two parameters, self and state. Inside of the init function, we will set self.state equal to state and self.date equal to datetime.now cast to a string. Then we will define a getState method that takes in one parameter, self. Inside of this function, we will return self.state. Then we will define a getName function that takes in the self parameter. For this function, we will return the date and then the state separated by a forward slash. Finally, we will create a getDate function that will take in the self parameter and return self.date. That wraps up our concrete memento class. Next, we will create a caretaker class. Inside of this class, we will define the init function that takes in two parameters, self and originator. Inside of the init function, we will set self.mementos equal to an empty list. We will also set self.originator equal to originator. Then we will create a backup function that takes in the self parameter. Inside of this function, we will print out the statement caretaker saving originator state, and then we will append self.originator.save to our self.mementos list. After that, we will create an undo function that takes in the self parameter. Inside of this function, we will make sure that self.mementos has elements inside of it. If it is empty, we will return from the function. Let's create a memento variable and set it equal to self.mementos.pop. Then we will print out the string caretaker restoring state to, and then pass in memento.getName. Next, we need to use a try except statement in case an error is thrown. Inside of the try statement, we will type self.originator.restore and pass in memento. This is an attempt to undo a change.
In the case that this operation gives us an exception, we will call self.undo to redo the change to prevent the error. After that, we will create a show history function that takes in the self parameter. Inside of this function, we will print caretaker list of mementos. Then we will iterate over each memento in self.mementos. Inside of the for loop, we will print out memento.getName. Time to test our code. We will create a variable named originator and set it equal to an originator object with the string initial state passed in. Then we will create a variable named caretaker, set equal to a caretaker object with the originator passed in. After that, we will call caretaker.backup. Then we will call originator.performAction with the int 1 passed in, which will set the originator's state to 1. Next, we will call caretaker.backup again. Then we will call originator.performAction with 2 passed in, which will set the state to 2. Then we will back up our caretaker object again. Then we will call originator.performAction and pass in 3. Then we will call Python's print function. After that, we will call caretaker.showHistory. Next, we will print out the string client performing undo, and then perform an undo. When we run the code, you will notice a lot of information was logged to the console. Let's take a moment to understand it all. First, the initial state of the originator is printed. We then see that we backed up our originator, then performed an action which changed its state to 1. The same thing goes for 2 and 3. We backed up our originator, then performed an action, and then the state was changed to the respective value. Next we see a history of the mementos displayed. Notice that both the time and state of the originators is shown. Notice that the current state is 3, so that is not shown. But we can see the times when our originator was set to its initial state, then state 1, and then state 2. Then we perform the undo, which will undo all of these changes and give us back our originator in its initial state. Notice that with the undo, the order of these printouts is the exact opposite of the others. Undo undoes each step. Now our list of mementos is empty since we undid all of the changes and our originator is in its initial state. In the next lecture, we will learn about the observer design pattern and how to implement it in Python.